Hello, I'm Chad Chancellor, the co-founder of Next Move Group. Next Move Group is a site selection and incentives negotiation firm that focuses on helping small to mid-sized companies. So today, I'm glad you've joined our webinar because we're going to talk about the top eight types of incentives the Fortune 100 companies get and utilize uh, and leverage really to make themselves more profitable that we want you to know about. We want the small to mid-sized companies to know about these incentives the Fortune 100 companies are using. You may wonder, how do we have this expertise? Well, we represent small to mid-sized companies, and here's just a handful of a sampling of our clients. Our average client averages in revenue from $5 million to $500 million a year in revenue. And here you can see a lot of them are in metal work and food processing, plastics, packaging, distribution, things of this nature. Here are some of our recent announcements where we help companies expand or find new locations. Our average client creates anywhere between 25 and 200 jobs in a location. So we've helped companies move to new locations. We've also helped them expand in existing locations. Here's a few testimonials I wanted to share with you from our small to mid-sized targeted clients. So the first one's a company out of Canada, the Winnipeg, Canada area that we helped put a plant in the United States. Jim Hickson, the CEO of Sterling Packaging, you can see, he says we saved them 11% in operating cost uh, above what the states offered them before they engaged us. So they looked around on their own for a site and, and after engaging us, we got them 11% more than they were offered. Next, you'll see Graham Walker, who's the CEO of a Fiber Bond, which is a heavy industrial manufacturing company up in North Louisiana, about 700 jobs. Uh, You'll see we just helped them do a project where they actually expanded where they are located now. And he says that uh, our, his expectations of incentives were exceeded by a factor of four. So we got him four times more incentives than he dreamed of on his own. And at the bottom is Danny Bartal with Polymer Logistics. This is an Israeli company that also has a U.S. headquarters in California. So they needed a plan in the Chicago area but they really didn't know that different states would compete for their projects. Being an international company, they didn't have a concept that Indiana and Illinois and Wisconsin would compete for their project. You can see he says we saved them 30% on the lease rate, workers comp premiums, electric rates, and so forth by finding them a good site. So you may wonder, why do we care about small to mid-sized companies? Well, it really goes back to, to our co-founders' uh, upbringings. I'm, I'm one of our co-founders, and when I was a small child, my dad worked at a Sunbeam plant. And, uh, and Sunbeam uh, shut the plant down and moved, the, moved all the jobs overseas to China. And, uh, and I remember really what that did, uh, not only to our community, but my dad's confidence as a hardworking blue collar guy. So uh, what we're interested in are helping those small to mid-sized companies that really create the growth in America. They're the engine of our country and they're not gonna up and move to China or Mexico to save a penny on labor. Those are the type of companies that we like to help. Uh, our other co-founder, he was raised by an entrepreneurial family, a very successful family that was in the meat processing business in Illinois. And uh, over time, Walmart put them out of business. So when we tell you we target the small to mid-sized companies, we mean it. This is, a, this is a passion of ours. Now, while we target the small to mid-sized companies, we will accept awards <laughs> from, the, from the major companies. So in 2017, Goldman Sachs honored us for our mission to create economic growth for the small to mid-sized companies. So while we don't, uh, we don't want to take on Goldman Sachs as a client, uh, we certainly will accept their awards. So with that being said, let's get right into the eight incentives that we want you to know about. So incentive number one is cash rebates for payroll. There are certain locations and even states uh, that will actually give you a cash rebate based on your payroll. So as you withhold payroll taxes from employees, let's say you withhold a 6% payroll tax, uh, you know, for a state, for a state withholdings, uh, there are states that will let you keep a portion or all of that payroll tax. I've seen it up to 6%. So literally, you could save 6% on your cost of labor just through this program if you know about. And a lot of the Fortune 100 companies use it. The second incentive we want you to know about, something called a new market tax credit financing area. So these are areas where if you do an investment in one of them, uh, they'll finance the deal and give you 20% of that deal as a cash grant. 
and that can be used for working capital, equipment, real estate, and so forth. So let's say you want to finance a $10 million deal. And let's say you know, five million worth of a building, three million worth of equipment, and two million worth of working capital. In this instance, basically, you would pay notes on eight million and get a twenty percent cash grant up front. You may say this sounds too good to be true, so let let me explain the bad parts of it as well. So uh, basically, this incentive only works in areas that are considered low income. Now, I've seen these zones be right in big cities, so you don't just have to be in rural America to receive this incentive, but this is a federal U.S. government incentive that uh, I've been in towns where you can be at one red light and one side of the road would qualify and the other didn't, and both of them look just as good, to be honest with you, but it's all census track driven. The other bad part of this program is it takes about six months to get through. So it is not a quick, uh, a quick and easy deal. It is a federal program. So obviously you have paperwork, but, but every client that I've ever helped uh, get it, they hate the process in the middle of it. When it's over, they want to do it again because it literally generates 20% cash up front. The next one we want you to know about is there are locations that will pay you to move and rig equipment. So a lot of our small to mid-sized clients say, you know, we built this plant where my dad founded this company and we own land, but if we would have ever build it again, we'd never put it here. It's not in the right location. We don't have the right infrastructure, you know, this, that, or the other. And they say, we really would like to move the plant, but, but my goodness, we don't have the, the cash flow to, uh, to, to move the, to literally move the equipment and rig it again and build inventory before we do it and, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, what we want you to know about is there are locations, there are states, towns, economic development entities, chambers of commerce that will pay to move and rig that equipment for you. So if you've ever thought, I really wish we were a different place, there are places out there that will pay to move that equipment for you, take that burden off of you. Incentive number four that we want you to know about is free or reduced real estate cost. Uh, there are lots of communities. I say lots. There's not as many now as there were three or four years ago because the economy is good. But there are a number of communities out there who own real estate. They own large buildings where maybe there was a, a, a plant before and as the company closed or moved that location, a lot of times they'll give that building to the community as a tax write-off. So you may have communities that own two and 300,000 square foot buildings with no debt on those buildings that they can literally lease to you for a dollar a square foot or a dollar a year or something. It's more prevalent than you might think. And I've had clients say, yeah, but I'm sure every one of those buildings are run down. Oh no, they're not. I have been in some very nice buildings. And you'll say, well, they're just in little bit towns. No, I've been in some nice buildings and some nice towns that you would want to know about. So I want you to know about this incentive. There's also uh, many communities who own public industrial parks. So the industrial boards in their towns will own public industrial parks where they'll sell you land for a reduced rate, uh, even prepare the sites for you. Incentive number five that we want small to mid-sized companies to know about are corporate income tax credits. So you know, all the Fortune 100 companies have huge high-powered accountants that get them every corporate income tax loophole in the world. So we want you to know about these. Most states, as you add machinery and equipment, even if you're retooling a line and not even adding new employees, will give you some sort of a tax credit for the value of that machinery. So let's say you're installing $2 million worth of equipment. In a lot of places, we can get you a $2 million tax credit. So literally the whole amount of the equipment. Now, most of the time, they'll only let you use 10% of it a year for 10 years. So you could only, in that instance, let's say use $200,000 worth of it every year for 10 years. So if you're not really profitable, you may not even use all the credit that they give you. But, but anytime you add machinery or equipment, add a line, add square footage to your building, you really need to think about uh, contacting somebody like us because most likely we can get you some corporate income tax credits to offset that. I see the Fortune 100 companies use this every day and I want you to know about it. Incentive number six we want small to mid-sized companies to know about. Cash to train employees. So there's all kind of money out there available to help train your workers. And sometimes it'll be a direct cash payout to you uh, to train them. Other times uh, you'll see programs that'll pay the cost of a trainer 
or so forth. So there's different ways to do it. But there are monies available to train employees. Lord knows today it's hard to find labor. I don't care how much you're paying or what part of the country you're in, it's hard to find labor. And so as you bring folks on, you may be bringing people uh, on that are unskilled, uh, that need some real serious training. And there are dollars out there that we can leverage for you to train those folks so you don't have to, you don't have to pay the cost of the training. Incentive number seven that we want small to mid-sized companies to know about, financing with cheaper interest rates than are offered at banks. So most communities have something called an industrial development board, and that board's job is to go out and recruit industries to bring into the town. And most of them can actually issue bonds. And these bonds that they issue are, are backed a lot of times by the cities or counties. So they get a cheaper interest rate than you might get on your own. And these can be used for uh, typically real estate or machinery purchases. So I, I've seen a lot of deals where there's two and three and 4% interest money when the best deal you can get at a bank is six or 7%. So it saves you a whole lot of money in that regard. A lot of different areas have revolving loan funds where they'll loan out money to industries to buy equipment or whatnot. And then as that money's paid back, they replenish their fund and loan it to the next one. And, and typically these, these monies are offered at two and three and 4% interest rates. And I think you ought to know about it. Incentive number eight, we want small to mid-sized companies to know about are reduced electric power rates. If you uh, have a heavy electric power usage, you know, that's one of your biggest expenditures a month. Don't just pay that bill and think you have ne no negotiation power whatsoever. Uh, typically, you're one of the largest customers of an electric power company, and they'll have published rates, but they may also have what I call gimmick rates, incentive rates that new industries can get. And if we negotiate for you, usually we can get you those rates. Even if you don't move, we can get them to, to retain you where you are. So don't just get that big, you know, electric bill every month and pay it and think to yourself, boy, this is high, without checking to see if, uh, if you can reduce your electric power rates. As I conclude, I want to tell you a little bit about our reputation. So we have built a reputation where we're asked to speak at a whole lot of different events, from U.S. Department of Commerce events to been lucky enough to introduce governors at, at various functions and even go to the Kentucky Derby with the governor from Kentucky. So that's, a, that's quite an honor. But we just put this in here so you can really understand. Uh, we got a, a reputation nationwide. We've done this business really all over the United States and, and had clients from all over the world. As I conclude, I will tell you we have a podcast channel. So every Thursday morning at 10 a.m., uh, we put out a podcast. You can find us on Apple and Google and basically wherever you find your podcast where we talk about creating economic growth for small to mid-sized companies and communities. This is what we talk about every week. And that's me. I'm Chad Chancellor. There you can see my LinkedIn. You can follow us at nextmovegroup.com. Our website is nextmovesitesselect.com. You can call our office at 1-800-764-3105. There's my personal email address, chad at the nextmovegroup.com. My cell number is 504-648-7716. We've got consultants located in New Orleans, St. Louis, Greenville, South Carolina, and Toronto. So if you're a small to mid-sized company that wants to leverage some of these incentives to create economic growth, you call us. We can help you. Thank you so much.